So I'm just at our latest development site which is nearing completion and I thought I would share with you the three top steps you need to take to get into property development. So let's go. Step number one, the most important step in my opinion, education. Get yourself educated to begin with. That is the most important step you could take to get yourself started on your property development journey. Start your education journey with free resources to begin with, such as podcasts, eBooks, YouTube channels, free networking events. Start with there before you move on to paid education. You will get much more bang for your buck. I was always a little bit skeptical of education providers telling me that I needed to start my property development journey with paid education. But I have nothing to sell. I have no affiliation with any of the companies I'm gonna mention in this video. This is just my, my opinion and my experience. And I do truly believe that they are correct. Start your property development journey with education. I done exactly what I'm telling you to do. I started with free online education and then progressed to paid education. I attended a one day discovery course, a three day property training event, and I also completed two online modules, one in land sourcing and one in project management. And I've been in a new build game for 20 odd years. And I still started my journey with education. I would highly recommend a company called White Box Property Solutions and also a fellow called Andrew Hubbard. Check them out online. I've got no affiliation with them. I just believe they're good training providers and I can speak firsthand for White Box Property Development. Got some free online resources, so check out their website and do start with the one day discovery course, which is like 99 pound and then progress to the three day event. A good education provider will teach you how to find the deals, analyze the deals, offer on the deals, raise the finance, build the project and exit at the end. All of these are gonna form part of your property development strategy and they're key to getting started. So tip number two, build yourself a power team. You're gonna need a whole host of skills in order to find a development, appraise a development, raise the finance, construct the development and exit the development. So you're gonna need a planning consultant, an architect, a solicitor, a finance broker, you're going to need all of these people to form part of your power team in order to you to complete the purchase, build the product and exit at the end. So get started, build your power team now. That's step number two. If you like any steps so far, please give the video a thumbs up and put a comment below on anything else you'd like to see. And also stick around to the end because I answer a couple of questions from our YouTube community page and I also discuss what is stopping people entering property development. Step number three, find investors. Don't hang around now, wait until you found a deal and then try and find your investors. Find your investors now, build a relationship and then you're ready to pounce as soon as a deal presents itself. Our latest acquisition was 90% funded by an investor. Find yourself and build yourself an investors list. Go to golf clubs, leisure clubs, networking events, entrepreneur clubs, business growth clubs. Find yourself investors, surround yourself with individuals that have got successful businesses and have got money that they'd be willing to invest in projects for a great return. Do not wait until you find the deal and then find the investors. Find the investors and then find the deal. Good educational program will teach you how to present to investors and build investor packs so you can raise the finance quickly and efficiently and secure the deals and move forward on your property journey. So I'll give you a quick tour of this latest development. So this is two two bedroom houses. This is semi, so they're attached to each other. The purchase price for the site was 110,000 and they're currently on the market for 300,000 each. So a gross development value of 600,000. We're nearing practical completion now. We just have the second fixed plumbing to do and paint and decorating and we have some externals to finish. And then we will be on site in the new year on our latest site, which I will put on screen now. Uh, myself and my wife are keeping that particular site. So we've already got the exit strategy agreed along with my business partner, who happens to be my dad. Um, so we'll be cracking on with that site next, but I'll give you a quick tour. Stick around to the end because we've got a question and answer session coming up as well. But let's have a quick tour of this one, nearly done looking fantastic and then we'll get back home and we'll answer some of your questions. Right as you can see the kitchen is in so we use Halvans for the kitchens and uh, they're pretty good value for money they might not be the cheapest on the market but one thing I do like about Halvans is they're all soft clothes as standard all the carcasses are made up and they're pretty quick and efficient to install so a carpenter took five days to install both kitchens they are identical and they're literally 
the same layout and the same type of kitchen. So, but five days, I think it's a pretty good turnaround. So, as you can see, we've got an integrated uh, fridge freezer. So, 70-30 split, 70% fridge, 30% freezer. Uh, we've got the uh, black splashback. We have a so an induction hob because there's no gas out here. Obviously, the oven, electric oven, uh, all soft clothes with Howden's, which I think is very good. Nice big corner unit. Um, we have a we have an integrated uh, dishwasher to go in, and we've just left the space for the washing machine. Uh, it's the only thing that won't be coming um, with this particular house. Spotlights are in. We have a heat sensor. Uh, we have a, an extractor, and out in the hallway we have the smoke alarm. So yeah, decent quality. So we did. We've gone for like the wood effect inside, not the white. Just think it brightened things up. So yeah. So let's have a look. So, nice big hallway. We've got the downstairs toilet here as well, which is a uh, pretty decent size. So, a uh, little basin and, and toilet in there. We've got a bit of storage space over here. Uh, consumer unit is in there, uh, but a decent space there. Under the stairs, we also have a bit of space as well, so you can store your shoes and stuff in there. But a nice big, light, bright uh, hallway and entrance into your home. These are two beds, pretty good size really, to be fair. Let's have a look in the living room, shall we? Right, try and give you a scale of the room. Pretty big, look. So we've got some lovely French doors going out onto the garden. <coughs> Decent size garden as well. So this is your living room area and me coming towards the camera now is the sort of dining room area. So plenty of room, uh, nice window out onto the garden, nice French doors out onto the patio area. So a very good, fantastic size space, I think. Uh, very good standard that we've produced here. Latex finish, just so we've got a nice smooth platform for the carpets and the floor to go down. Let's have a quick look upstairs, shall we? So, up the stairs, onto the landing area. Behind the camera is uh, bed one, uh, which is slightly bigger than bed two. It's got two windows in it. Uh, bed one to my left, your right. Uh, very nice size. Uh, so this is the landing area. Again, nice big open space. And let's have a look in the bathroom, shall we? So, tiling is absolutely fantastic. It's done a real cracking job with the tiling. Shower over the bath, um, pretty straightforward really, but basin to my left here. Obviously, when that goes in, when the plumber comes back and does his second fix. Uh, but that's, that's about it really. Let's have a quick look in the bedroom, shall we? So, technically, bed two, as you can see, it's a decent sized bedroom. Nice window into your garden. Decent, lovely doors. When you see these doors, I, I do love these doors. Again, Howlands, all the second fix carpentry is from Howlands. But decent size, double bedroom, uh, fantastic finish, fantastic quality. Just decoration pretty much to up here after the plumbing's done. Let's have a quick look in bed number one. Hopefully you get a scale of bed one. As you can see, it's pretty big. It's flooded with light. Two big windows looking out onto the um, front elevation here. It's looking absolutely fantastic. Again, Bit more on a double bedroom, I would say. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, we've got some slabbing done in the back gardens now uh, and down the pathway, so we'll have a quick look outside um, and show you what's what out there as well. So this is the pathway down to one of the gardens. So uh, we've been doing the slabbing down here. Nice decent path all the way down. Nice bit of a platform out here. And as you can see, the patio is down. So all top soiled as well. We've raised the inspection chambers to the correct level now. So. All tops old, ready to go. Look at the fence, beautiful. So this is for the air source heat pump, goes in this particular spot. But that's it. You can see the patio area there, bit of a step down. There you go. Goes out to the front there. Right, time for question and answer session. So all of the questions that I'm about to answer have been posted on the community tab on our YouTube page. So if you want any questions answered or you've got any suggestions for video content ideas, head over to our YouTube channel, click on the community tab and you can post your comments and suggestions in the area there. So let's get into it. So Gav123456 Able, I mean what a mouthful of a username that is Gav wants to know what is an SPV. So an SPV is a special purpose vehicle. It's just a regular limited company set up solely for a particular purpose. So for example, if you're doing 10 developments, then you would have an SPV set up for each development. You may have different investors, you may have different shareholders in each 
limited company. So if they were all under one umbrella of one big um, limited company, it would be hard for you to ring fence off each development and there could be a conflict of charges on land, uh, protecting lenders and investors. So typically an SBV is set up per development or for a particular purpose. And then when it's done with, the company is dissolved, everything's dealt with, it's clean, it's quick, it's easy, it's all legal and above board, and it's actually a fantastic way of handling your developments. So I hope that answers your question, Gav, and uh, thanks for posting. So Thomas Martin asks, how hard is it to raise development finance? It's not particularly hard, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, Thomas. I wouldn't approach your standard high street banks. I would go to a specialist development lender who understands what you are trying to achieve and is their bread and butter and do it all day, every day. Typically, banks won't understand the process. They won't understand the, the SPV mechanism answered in the previous question, and it can all take too long and be a bit of a long drawn out process. So find yourself a specialist lender, they will know what you're talking about, they will analyse the deal, they will run the numbers, they will make sure you've got enough profit, make sure you've got enough contingency, and if the deal stacks up, they'll lend you the money, no problem whatsoever. Development finance companies will typically want first charge on the land, even if you own the land outright, they will still want first charge, uh, but this is fairly standard and they may also want a personal guarantee. So although you will set up your development in a limited company, they may ask for a personal guarantee from you. So if anything goes wrong and you dissolve the limited company, you will still be liable for X amount of money if anything goes wrong. Standard in property development finance. Typically, a general rule of thumb when it comes to development finance is you will, you will be required to put in about 50% of the purchase price of the land. So if the land's 100K, you're gonna need to stick in 50K of your money or someone else's money. And development finance companies like you to have skin in the game. So basically they want you to put your money where your mouth is. But it's fairly easy. This is what they do all day, every day. They typically only lend for development finance, whereas your bank, you, you may want to raise money for a car, a wedding, a holiday, etc. Development fi finance companies are specialists in what they do and they understand the problems you're going to encounter. So it's pretty straightforward, Thomas, and thanks for posing the question. Hope that helps. I also asked on our community page, what is stopping you entering property developments? And Ian Armitage has stated economic uncertainty. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that, Ian. You can't predict the market. If you sit around trying to time the market, you'll be waiting around forever and your life will pass by and you will achieve nothing. So there's a saying in the property game that it's not time in the market, it's time in the market. And never a truer word has been spoken in my opinion. House prices typically double every 10 years and they have done for the last 150, 200 years and they will do for the next 150, 200 years. It's just the law of economics. And as the great Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. So don't let economic uncertainty hold you back, get stuck into it and don't sit around waiting for the market to be just right because it will just pass you by. Hope that helps Ian and I look forward to you posting when you first start your developments. So Charlie Humphrey states, not having enough money. Well, I do actually think this is a bit of a mindset thing because the barrier to entry into property developments is actually quite low. So our latest acquisition was 90% funded by a private investor. We paid the deposit on exchange and the investor paid the balance on completion. So we used a very, very small fraction of our own money for our next property development. So having little money or no money is not a barrier to entry. It shouldn't hold you back and it could potentially take you a lifetime to save enough money to get going. So seek out investors, seek out friends and family, work out what you need, analyze some deals, see what you're gonna to need to put in, and you can reverse engineer it, and then get the money together and get stuck into it. Having no money is not a barrier to entry, it's a mindset thing, so get stuck into it. I hope you found this video useful. If you wanna learn how you can actually get paid to build your own development, click or touch the screen now and check out our other video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time around.